What's up, everybody? And welcome to another edition of High Mythology, the show where we puff more smoke than a blue genie, get higher than two teenagers on a magic carpet ride, and uh, tell you guys silly stories from mythology and folklore. I like that double pun. I did a double for this one. I'm so Mm. excited. Yeah, Yeah. tonight we will be bringing you the story of Aladdin and the Wonderful Lamp from A Thousand and One Arabian Nights. By? By Dick Burton. Dick Burt. Sir Dick Burt. Sir Dick Burt. (laughs) Sir Dick Burton. He's a dick. He's a sir. (laughs) <laughs> He's a knighted dick. <laughs> he may be a dick, but he is a knighted dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, how do you even do that? Do you just slap the sword on the balls? Or <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It goes uh, there. It goes there. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm excited to get into this one. Um, it's a lot different than the movie. Very the movies. Yeah. Uh, there's no Will Smith. It's a shame. It's a shame nobody gets slapped. (laughs) (laughs) GD, I summon you. Bitch. (laughs) (laughs) What you mean? (laughs) Keep my wife's name. (laughs) (laughs) I was literally about to say that. (laughs) I didn't say anything, GD. (laughs) Jesus. Jesus, you're so violent. (laughs) Um. Yeah, uh, so I guess without further ado, Kimbo, why don't you go ahead and jump into it? Thank you. In China, there once lived a poor tailor and his wife, who had a son called Aladdin, who is 10 years old, mind you, at this time. A careless, idle boy who would do nothing but play all day long in the streets with idle little boys like himself. Good for nothing piece of shit. A scapegrace, as they called it. 10 years old, we should have two jobs. In the book that keeps calling it a scapegrace. New scapegrace hooligans. Uh, That's just the terms they used back then. He was a scapegrace. What? Oh, shit. Fuck, bro. That's a bad word. (laughs) (laughs) This so grieved the father that when Aladdin turned 15, he died. Because he wouldn't change his ways. (laughs) Son, I need to tell you something. I'm dying. Not from any particular disease, just because you're so goddamn lazy, you fucking scapegrace. (laughs) (laughs) In spite of his mother's tears and prayers, Aladdin did not mend his ways. One day, when he was playing in the streets as usual, a stranger asked him his age and if he were not the son of Mustafa the the tailor. Aladdin said, Bruh. Yeah, but he, like, died. On this, the stranger, who was a famous African magician, also called the Mahrabi, Mahrabi. fell on his neck and kissed him, saying, I am your uncle, and I knew you from your likeness to your father, my beloved brother. Take these two gold coins and fetch food for supper. Tell your mother I am coming and prepare a meal. Aladdin ran home and told his mother of his newly found uncle. She said, Nah, boy, you don't have any aunts or uncles. <laughs> However, she prepared supper and bade Aladdin seek his uncle, who, when came Aladdin with f- wine and fruit, he presently fell down and kissed the place where Mustafa used to sit, bidding Aladdin's mother not to be surprised at not having seen him before, as he had been forty years out of the country. He then turned to Aladdin and asked him his trade, at which the boy hung his head, while his mother Bruh. burst into tears. <laughs> On learning that Aladdin was idle and would learned had would have learned no trade, he offered to take up shop for him and stock it with merchandise. Aladdin's mother said to herself, <laughs> I guess my husband did have a brother. Otherwise, why would someone offer to set my kid up with his own shop? No stranger would do this, unless related through blood. Or for something more sinister, maybe. But let's just go with the blood relative thing. Well, you must have had a bubble in your voice from the last one. <laughs> yeah. You went from country <laughs> to... Nah, boy! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just got... <laughs> I had something stuck in my throat there. <laughs> just think that's quite the ch- different voice, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite the change. <laughs> Next day. <laughs> it was that last cigarette she smoked that pushed her <laughs> over the line. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. 
<laughs> Next day, he bought Aladdin a fine suit of clothes and took him over the city, showing him in the showing him the sights, and bought him and brought him home at nightfall to his mother. Wow, I'm sorry, I'm having such a hard time with these ten words. Biddy, beep, 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 <clears throat> his mother, who was overjoyed to see her fu- uh, her son look so fine. Look at that kid. Mm. Look at him all dressed up. He's got a little fez on. (laughs) The next day, the Maharabi. vest. Magician. Oh, I guess I should. Chest hanging. Magician. Next day, the magician led Aladdin into some beautiful gardens. And along the way, outside the city. Along the way, outside in the city gates. Okay, somewhere in there, they sat down. Stranger danger is what I'm picking up. The moral (laughs) of the story. (laughs) Uh, they uh, sat down by a fountain, and the magician pulled a cake from his girdle, and then they divided it between <laughs> themselves. Then they journeyed onward till they uh, till they almost reached the mountains. I have a puppy dog in my van. Would you like to see it? <laughs> <laughs> Come with me. Aladdin was so tired that he begged to go back, but the magician beguiled him with pleasant stories and led him on in spite of himself. At last, they came to two mountains divided by a narrow valley. The false uncle says, We will go no further. I I will show you something wonderful. Have you ever seen a... (laughs) (laughs) What's wrong? You don't like your lines? Have you ever seen a black penis before? Have you ever been in a cockpit? (laughs) <laughs> Ever sat on a grown man's lap? <laughs> now, I remember. Okay, so I, I guess I never explained this. Uh, this magician <laughs> is from Morocco specifically. Uh, they keep in the the original story. Like oh, this is just a very shortened version. Uh, they just keep mentioning that he's a Moroccan or a Mordor. Is this a a mo, a, mo, a, mor, a murd, murder? M O O R D O O N more more I don't know I don't know but that's what they just kept calling him and he had like this little manservant that would follow him around and shit <laughs> and he was, dude he, they didn't give him a name but he just sat in the corner and did shit you know what I mean like whenever he he went over to his mom's house to eat dinner with them that said that he just walked in straight away just walked straight into the kitchen and was never seen again. Mm-hmm. R.I.P. Like, or he follows Godfrey. around. He follows around uh, the magician dude, like with his money and shit. He's like his <laughs> coin purse, I guess. I have no idea. <laughs> look, look, I'm molting. But the little dude's with him, like the whole time. Mm, the Moroccan dude. Yeah. R.I.P. Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Carrying on. When it was uh, lit, the magician threw on a, uh, threw it on it. Ah, oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're, you're I smoke some real Still bad. hung up on that penis. Yeah, I was. It was. <laughs> oh, I had to read through it again. I forgot that I wrote that for you. But it's good to know that I can stop you. <laughs> <laughs> when it was lit, the magician threw on it a powder which he had about him, at the same time saying some magical words. The earth trembled and opened in front of them, disclosing a square, flat marble stone with a great big brass ring in the middle to raise it by. Aladdin tried to run away, but the magician caught him and gave him a blow that knocked him down. Pow! Aladdin <laughs> cries piteously. Stranger danger! <laughs> Bruh, what have I done, uncle? Whereupon the magician said more kindly, Fear nothing, but obey me. Beneath this stone lies a treasure which is to be yours, and no one else may touch it. So you must do exactly as I tell you. At the word treasure, Aladdin forgot his fears and grasped the ring that he was told, saying the names of his father and his grandfather. Aladdin lifted the stone with ease, and some steps appeared. The magician said, Go down at the foot of those steps. You will find an open door leading into four grand halls. Tuck in your gown and go through them without touching anything, or you will die instantly. 
These holes lead you to a garden of fine fruit, fruit trees. <laughs> Walk on till you come to a niche in the terrace where stands the lighted lamp. Pour out the oil it contains and bring it to me when you have in your possession, in your possession the lamp. You may pick as many fruits from the garden on your way back, but not before you have the lamp. He drew a ring from his finger and gave it to Aladdin, bidding him prosper. He told Aladdin that the ring would protect him and keep him safe. Aladdin found everything as the magician had said. Three rooms so full of gold that no sultan or king on earth has had such a great as hoard as this. And then he passed through a garden which beheld such grand and magnificent trees, all bearing what seemed like fruit, but they sparkled and shined brighter than the sun. Then he came into a room of grand and costly carpets of every kind, and in the middle of the room, on a marble stand, stood the lamp. Aladdin took the lamp and poured out the oil, and then he went back into the garden and gathered some fruits off the tree. Uh, He filled his pockets and all available spaces in his outfits. He even put a few in his butt. <laughs> yeah, right up Main Street. Most of the sparkling fruits were as big as his fist. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you got to put it way up your butt, Morty. Way, way up there. Way up there. <laughs> he didn't know exactly what they were, but they were pretty, and they, they could decorate his home. He didn't even know what he was getting. He, he didn't know. He'd yeah, never maybe, seen such know. a thing. Maybe it's an orange. Maybe it's made out of gold or something. Uh-huh. Who's gonna? Who's to know? Well, I'm just gonna shove two or three of them up my ass and carry on. <laughs> well, he weighed himself down pretty good, and then decided to head back to his uncle. He arrived at the mouth of the cave, and the magician cried out in a grand hurry, "Make haste and give me the lamp!" But Aladdin refused to do until he was out of the cave. Bruh. He cried to his uncle to help him out, for as Aladdin tried to walk up the steps. He was so weighted down by the fruits that he was sinking through the steps made of sand. Uh. The magician flew into a terrible passion, and throwing some more powder on the fire, he said something, and the stone rolled back into its place. (coughs) The magician left Persia forever. (laughs) (laughs) He just dipped. And deuces. (laughs) Dude, he... He was so pissed off that he was like, fuck you, die. Let's not let's not overlook the fact that he abducted a 15-year-old boy and left him locked in a cave in the mm-hmm. desert. Yeah, which plainly showed that he was no uncle of Aladdin's. No, it's the... It's but a cunning a magician... Uncle. I'm still reading the book. Okay? But a cunning magician who had read in his magic books about a wonderful lamp, which could make him the most powerful man in the world. Though he alone knew where to find it, he could only receive it from the hands of another. He had picked out the foolish Aladdin for this purpose intending to get the lamp and kill him afterwards, but he was content knowing Aladdin's fate was sealed. For two days, Aladdin's remained, Aladdin's, Aladdin remained in the dark, crying and laminating. At last, he clasped his hands in prayer, and in doing so, he rubbed the ring, which the magician had forgotten to take from him. Immediately, an enormous and frightful genie arose out from the earth, saying, Hmm, what do you want with me? (laughs) I am the slave of the ring, and I will obey you in all things. (laughs) I want to see where I can put this pineapple. (laughs) Aladdin fearlessly replied, (laughs) Bro, like, can you deliver me from this place? Whereupon the earth opened, and he found himself outside. As soon as his eyes could bear the light, he went home. When he awoke the next day, he told his mother what had passed, and showed her the lamp and the fruits that he had gathered in the garden, which were in really, in reality, like, super precious stones. So He precious. doesn't find that out until, like, way later. Uh, <laughs> no wonder it hurt so bad. He then asked for some food, and she said... Alas, child, I have nothing in the house, but I will. I have spun a little cotton and will go and sell it for you. Aladdin bade her keep her cotton, for he would sell the lamp instead, as it was very dirty. So she began to rub it, that it might fetch a higher price. Instantly, a hideous genie appeared and asked what she would have. She fainted, but Aladdin snatched the lamp and said boldly, Um... <laughs> uh... 
I'm like pretty hungry. The genie returned with a golden <laughs> bowl, 12 golden plates containing such rich meats, two gold cups and two bottles of wine. Aladdin's mother, when she came to her senses, said, Where on earth did this splendid feast come from? To which Aladdin replies, Uh, just eat it. So they sat at breakfast till it was uh, dinner time. And Aladdin told his mother about the lamp. She begged him to sell it and have nothing to do with devils. Because <laughs> uh, it was actually considered taboo. Yeah, you're not supposed then. to fuck with genies. Jen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Aladdin said, Oh, no. Since, mm. like, chance made us aware of its virtues, we'll, like, use it. And also the ring, which I'll always wear on my finger. When they had eaten all the genie had brought, Aladdin sold one of the gold plates, and so on until none were left. He then recoursed to the genie, who gave him another set of plates, and thus they lived for many months. Just eating and selling, eating, eating food and slinging plates. I would also like to point out during this time, Aladdin is still going in the book. He is still going to like markets and shit and like learning different trades from other people because oh, he doesn't want to be a scapegrace son of a bitch. Now his uh, false uncle really got him going about like being able to be a merchant. So he was totally like devoted to it. <laughs> he was into the idea. Yeah, he just so his he, mentor like, betrayed him and locked him in a cave. Yeah. But like he fucking still learned some shit, dude. And so, but I guess not enough because each gold plate he would sell to this, what they called the tricky Jew. <laughs> oh, wow. And yeah, this that's, I remember you telling me about the super, did you cut out the anti-Semitic part of the story? Uh, yeah, it wasn't really <laughs> a lot to do with the story, so I didn't really use it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's good. But, uh. Because they definitely have a character who was just called the Trixie Jew. <laughs> yeah, and he would like... Uh, the guy would just sell Aladdin one gold coin for each gold plate. And then he happened upon a, a jeweler's shop who was like, hey, bro, how much are you selling those uh, those gold plates to? The, to the, I heard you were selling them to that, that tricky Jew. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Let's just edit that part out of the story. And, and then, then tell people about it anyway. But anyway, like... That the, way you know. The jeweler was like, nah, dude, he, he's been ripping you off, like, big time. Like, you can sell that for 70 gold coins. You could have lived way richer for, like, the past fucking month or two. <laughs> Instead of just selling one a day just to get by. Yeah. But alas, we cut that out of the story, but told you about it anyway, just so I you're just prepared. I just thought it was funny. Just so you're prepared if you read the that actual Aladdin. Gym. There is, wow. <laughs> yeah, wow. there is that whole thing to deal with. I mean, it's no better than the princess, you know yeah. what I mean? She's just looked at it like a fucking piece of meat. Yeah, true. Just like the penis that that guy was going to pull out earlier in the story. <laughs> Very it's just much a so. big old piece of meat. <laughs> it's a big old slab. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Anyway, <clears throat> One day, Aladdin heard an order from the sultan proclaiming that everyone was to stay at home and close their shutters while the princess, his daughter, went to and from the bath. Aladdin was seized by a desire to see her face, which was very difficult as she was always wore a veil. He hid himself behind the door of the bath and peeped through a peephole like a little pervert. Bro. <laughs> and the princess lifted her veil as she went in. Bro. And looked so beautiful that Aladdin fell in love with her at first sight. Swing. He went home so changed that his mother was frightened. He told her he loved the princess so deeply that he could not live without her and meant to ask for her uh, marriage to her father. His mother, upon hearing this, burst out laughing. But Aladdin had at last prevailed upon her to go before the sultan and carry his request. Aladdin fetched a handkerchief and laid, it, laid in it the magic fruits from the enchanted garden, which sparkled and shone like the most beautiful jewels. Hold on, hold on. Let me grab one. <laughs> <laughs> and then he placed another handkerchief on top of it and gave it to his mother. She took these with her to please the sultan and set out, trusting in the lamp. 
Uh, and it was also known if you go to the Sultan and ask him for something, you give him something first. Yeah, you give mm-hmm. him some poop covered jams. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, the Grand Vizier and the Lords of the Council had just gone in as she entered the hall, and she placed herself in front of the Sultan. He, however, took no notice of her. She went every day for a month and stood in the same place. <laughs> Jam! Commitment! Yeah, and yeah, month fucking straight. There are a couple of days that they don't hold council, but there was in the story. Yeah. Yeah, so it ended up like a month. She like, still showed up because she's that good of a mother. But they only hold council three days out of the week. So. Oh, lazy. Lazy. Yeah. yeah. So that's why it took a month. When yeah. the council broke up on the sixth day, on the sixth day. Ah, uh, see? Huh? See, like, okay, when this, when I did this fucking story, it said that she had stood in the same place for a week. I was like, no, she was there for a month. So she was there for a month. Book. Six uh, days a week. Whatever. When the council broke up on the, the last day of the month, the sultan said to his vizier, I see a certain woman in the audience chamber every day, carrying something in a bowl. Call on her the next time she shows, so I might see if I can grant her request. That bowl was stinky, too. Have you smelt it? I can smell it from over here. Next day, at a sign from the vizier, she went up to the foot of the throne and remained kneeling until the sultan said to her, Arise, good woman. Tell me your request, so I might be able to help you. She hesitated, so the sultan sent away all but his vizier and bade her to speak freely, promising to forgive her beforehand for anything she might say. Then she told him of her son's violent love for the princess. She said to him, I prayed like every day for him to forget her, but in vain. He threatened to do something desperate, so I I refused to go and ask, ask your majesty for the hand of the princess. Now I pray to you, forgive me and my son, Aladdin. The sultan asked her kindly what she had in the bowl, whereupon she unfolded the jewels oh, and presented it's, it's them the poop ruby. to the sultan's feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's got a tart smell. <laughs> oh, it stings the eyes a little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah, just, you know, rub it into your eyes a bit. He was thunderstruck and turning to the vizier said, I believe I have pink eye now, good man. <laughs> <laughs> But what do you say? Ought I not to bestow the princess on one who values her at such a price? The vizier, who wanted her for his own son, begged the sultan withhold her for three months, in the course of which he hoped his son would contrive to make him a higher ranking. The sultan granted this and told Aladdin's mother that though he consented to the marriage, she must not appear before him again for three months. Aladdin waited patiently for nearly three months, but after two he la- two had elapsed, his mother, going into the city to buy oil, found everyone rejoicing, and she asked what was happening. There's like flowers everywhere, music's going on, shit's Rejoice! happening. Rejoice! The people are like, oh my god, like, do you not like, no, are you like some kind of foreigner? Like, watch maybe, mouth, maybe the son of like a grand, like... Really? The son of the Grand Vizier is, like, marrying the Sultan's daughter tonight. <laughs> and it's, like, all the fucking rave. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Breathless, she ran and told Aladdin. <laughs> he was overwhelmed at first, but presently bethought him of the lamp. He rubbed it. Mm. And the genie appeared, saying, Mmm. What do you want? <laughs> Genie likes the way he rubbed that lamp. <laughs> Aladdin replied, uh, Like the Sultan has broken his promise to me, and the Vizier's son is going to have the princess. Uh, my uh, my command is that tonight you you bring uh bring the bride and the groom here when they like lay down and get ready to like bone and stuff. The genie said, Oh, my master, to hear is to obey. Mm. Mm. And the genie disappeared. <laughs> Aladdin, 
went to eat supper with his mother, and after some time had passed, Aladdin went to his chamber to await the newly wed couple, <laughs> where, sure enough, the genie transported the bed containing the vizier's son and the Oof. princess. Aladdin told the genie, Like, take the groom and put him in a dark, cold closet, and, like, make sure his dick doesn't get hard or anything, and then, like, return him here at, like, maybe daybreak. No, 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 you return. Then return. You you come back at daybreak. Yeah, yeah that's the one. Sorry, bro. Whereupon, the genie <laughs> took the vizier's son out of bed, leaving Aladdin with the princess. Aladdin said to her, Uh, bro, like, don't be afraid. You're going to be my wife and stuff. And to me, but by your unjust father, you you promised to me. And, like, no harm's going to come to you, though. I'm going to smoke this bowl. <laughs> sure. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> totally busy right now. Don't bother me while I'm playing Call of Duty, Mom. The princess, who was too frightened <laughs> to speak, and passed the most miserable night of her life, while Aladdin lay down beside her, and uh, he put a pillow between them. Yeah, bruh. And then he slept soundly. At the appointed hour, the genie fetched the shivering bridegroom and laid him in his place and transported the bed back to the palace. My dick don't work. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It said that the genie, like, touched his intestines. Ew. And then uh, <laughs> it was, like, forever, like, if you put, like, an ice pack on your balls. Forever. <laughs> Can you imagine eight hours of an yeah. ice pack on your balls? Yeah. When, they Ouch. Don't, when yeah. they don't need them. And the genie touched his intestines from the inside. It was pretty weird. I was like, oh, shit. That sucks. Anyway. Uh, presently, the sultan. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile. <laughs> came to wish his daughter good morning. Because, you know, that was her first... Cherry chopping, so the unhappy uh, you're pregnant yet. <laughs> the unhappy vizier's son jumped up and hid himself while the princess would not say a world a uh, world a word and was very sorrowful. My dick don't work. <laughs> the Sultan said uh, sent her mother to her, who said, Girl, what's up? Why won't you speak to your dad? He's like pretty pissed you won't speak to him. Like, what happened? Not what you were expecting. Mm. Was the vizier's son, like, inadequate? Oh, maybe not to your pleasing. Mm. Don't worry. Your father was disappointing, too. But he learned a few <laughs> things, and, you know, he's gotten better. Like, like way better now. Mm. I have gold to compensate for my micro penis. Exactly. <laughs> the princess sighed deeply, and at last told her mother how during the night the bed had been carried off into some strange house. And what had passed there? Her mother did not believe her in the least, but bade her to rise and considered it in an idle dream. The following night, the exact same thing happened. And the next morning, upon the princess, the princess's refusing to speak to the sultan, so the sultan threatened to cut off her head. She then confessed all, bidding him to ask the vizier's son if it were not so. The sultan told the vizier to ask his son, who owned the truth, adding that dearly as he loved the princess, he would rather die than to go through such another fearful night <laughs> and wish to be work. separated from her. His wish was granted, and there was an end of feasting and rejoicing. When the three months were over, Aladdin sent his mother to remind the sultan of his promise. She stood in the same place as before, and the sultan, who had forgotten Aladdin, at once remembered him and sent for her. Upon seeing her look of poverty, the sultan felt less inclined than ever to keep his word and asked the vizier's advice, who counseled him to set so high a value on the princess that no man living could come up with it. The sultan turned to Aladdin's mother, saying, Good woman, a sultan must remember his promises, and I will remember mine eventually. But your son must first bring me forty basins, filled to the brim with virgin gold and jewels, carried by forty white slave girls, and accompanied by just as many black eunuchs. <laughs> I'm very, very specific on that. 
Oh, splendidly dressed. I don't want to see no shibby shabby shimshams around here. Tell him that I await his answer. The mother, the mother, the mother of Aladdin bowed low and went home, thinking all was lost. She gave Aladdin the message, adding, "He might wait long enough for you. You might wait long enough for your answer." Her son replied, "Uh." Bro, not as long as you think, Mom. God. I'd do God, Mom. <laughs> I would do a lot, great deal more than that for, like, the princess. I feel like even as a stoner 15-year-old, you would have a lot more get up and go when it comes to getting your dick whacked off by a princess. Mom! Don't talk about my penis, Mom. <laughs> I just feel like you're very stoned. Yeah. For Aladdin. He's, he, well, he's a scape race. He doesn't want to do anything. He's real lazy. <laughs> he is. He <laughs> is. His is attitude with yeah, everything. Right. You want to go in the cave? Do you uh, think he would have a little bit more enthusiasm for Putang? Uh, and then after that, be lazy. Mom, don't bother me. I'm playing Call of Duty. <laughs> Mom! Princess! <laughs> uh, he summoned the genie, and in a few moments, the 80 slaves arrived. Uh, and filled up the small house and garden. Aladdin made them set out to the palace, two and two, followed by his mother. They were so richly dressed uh, with such splendid jewels in their girdles that everyone crowded to see them and the basins of gold they carried on their heads. They entered the (laughs) palace, and after kneeling before the sultan, stood in a half circle around the throne with their arms crossed while Aladdin's mother presented them to the sultan. He hesitated no longer, but said, Good woman, return. Tell him, tell your son that I wait for him with open arms. She lost no time in telling Aladdin, bidding him to make haste. (laughs) My daughter waits for him with open legs. But Aladdin first called the genie, and Aladdin says to him, Uh, bro, like, I want a scented bath and, like, some nice clothes. And I want, like, a horse. Like, the best horse, though. And, like, 20 slaves. Ooh, to attend me. And then bring me more, like, six more slaves. Ah, god damn. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I want them, like, super nice dressed. And then they're gonna wait on my mom and shit. And then I want, like, 12,000 gold pieces. But I want them in, like, 12 purses. That's like asking for $100 in, like, pennies. <laughs> Twelve. I'm just saying. <laughs> I want like 150 bucks mm-hmm. in nickels, and I want it in 17 socks. <laughs> no sooner said than done. Aladdin mounted his horse and passed through the streets. The slaves strewing gold as they went. Those Sweet who had horse. played with him in his childhood did not know him, for he had grown so handsome. I imagine and it was riding only- by with a middle finger raised. It was only Sucks three suck, months. Nerds. Only three months passed since they've seen him. Losers. That's it. Three months. That's three all months that's passed. Past. That's all that's passed. When the Sultan saw him, he came down from his throne, embraced him, and led him into the halls where the feast was spread, intending to marry him to the princess that very day. But Aladdin refused, saying, Why, well, I should build her a uh, crib. And we'll like put it on MTV's cribs. And then, he, cool. and then he took his leave. Bye. <laughs> Once home, he said to the genie, Mom, I'm playing Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, uh, build me a place, like, with marble and jasper and a gate and, like, some other precious rocks in there and shit. Uh, and then in the middle, like, build a large hall with, like, a big-ass dome. And, like, four walls with, like, tons of gold and silver and shit. And, like, (laughs) I want six windows with lattices. I love fucking lattices, bro. Uh, All except one, which is to be left unfinished. And it, like, must be set with diamonds and rubies and shit. Like, the same size as the fruits that I put up my butt earlier in the story. Like, yeah. And then I want, like, stables and, like, fucking horses and shit. And I want grooms and slaves. More slaves. Ooh. Again, <laughs> <laughs> uh, go, go and see about that, bro. Yeah, there are a lot of slaves. What do you think, it. bro? The palace was finished by the next day. 
And the genie carried him over there and showed him all the orders faithfully carried out, even to the laying of a velvet carpet embroidered with gold that went from Aladdin's palace to the Sultan's, in order so that the princess does not tread on common soil. (laughs) Aladdin's mother then dressed herself carefully and walked to the palace with her slaves, while he followed her on horseback. The Sultan sent uh, musicians with trumpets and cymbals to meet them, so that the air resounded... Uh, with the music and cheers. She was taken to the princess, who saluted her and treated her with great honor. At night, the princess said goodbye to her father and set out on the carpet that Aladdin to Aladdin's palace, with his mother at her side, and followed by the hundreds of slaves. She was Ouch. charmed. She was charmed at the sight of Aladdin, who ran to receive her. Ah. Uh, so the palace that he built was like super fucking extraordinary. It was supposed to surpass the Taj Mahal. Oh yeah, no, it got, like, yeah, I figured it was a pretty nice palace. It was like he wanted diamond windows and it was supposed to be considered like a wonder of the world. Like it was so yeah. magnificent. Yeah. Each tile was like a mosaic. Yeah. And there was emeralds and rubies and like diamonds. And, and like, like gates and jasper that just swirled like, into the marble. It was pretty dope. It sounded pretty dope and shit. It was fucking crazy. Dope. Anyway. Lan said to his wife. Sup. <laughs> she told him. No. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Sup. <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> okay. She told him that having seen him, she willingly obeyed her father in this matter. Uh, after... <laughs> The Sup, yeah, the now Sup just makes sense. <laughs> After the wedding had taken place, Aladdin led her into the hall, where a feast was spread, and she supped with him. After which, they danced till midnight. Then they went to bed and did the deed. Mm. Mm. Bro. More lotion. I am a man now. <laughs> <laughs> Next day, Aladdin invited the Sultan to see his palace. On entering the hall with the four and twenty windows, with their <laughs> rubies, place one, rubies, diamonds, <laughs> emeralds, the Sultan cries. It is a wonder of the world. There is only one thing that surprises me. Was it by accident that the one window was left unfinished? Aladdin replied. No, sir. By design, I wish your majesty to have the glory of finishing this palace. Oh my god, he changed him for breaking I've gotten a piece of ass now. I'm a grown man. Dude, like, fucking, (laughs) the whole time he's trying to bang fucking Jasmine. Or Princess Budar Al-Budar. Budar Budar. Budal Al-Budur. Badar Al-Badur. Yeah, that Badar was fucking Badur. crazy. So Princess Jasmine, they just ca- kept talking about like saving her maidenhead like from the vizier's side. Save it shit. from the vizier. <laughs> like I wanted her to be pure. You must protect her, her pureness. Her maidenhead still intact. It's like, damn. What fucking creepy on her vagina, dude. That is, that's some crazy shit. Lock it up. It. Lock the pussy down. We must. (laughs) The sultan was so pleased and sent for the best jewelers in the city. He showed them the unfinished window and bade them to fit it up like the others. The jeweler said, Old Basur, we cannot find enough jewels of their size to match. No. No. The sultan had his own fetched, which they soon used, but to no purpose. For in a month's time, the work was not half done. Aladdin, knowing that their task was in vain, bade them to undo their work and carry the jewels back and the genie to finish the window at his command. The sultan was surprised to receive his jewels again and visited Aladdin, who showed him the window window finished. The sultan embraced him, the envious vizier, meanwhile, hinting that it was the work of enchantment. Aladdin had won the hearts of the people by his gentle bearing by showering them with gold everywhere he went. <laughs> Just mad golden showers. Mm-hmm. At some point that there's a war and he's made like captain of the Sultan's armies and uh, he won several battles for him, but remained modest and courteous as before. I am still modest. <laughs> and thus lived in peace and content for several years. 
But far away in Africa, the magician remembered Aladdin, and by his magic arts discovered that Aladdin, instead of perishing miserably in the cave, had escaped and married a princess, with whom he was living in great honor and wealth. He knew that the poor tailor's son could have only accomplished this by the means of the lamp, and so the magician traveled night and day till he reached the capital of China, hell-bent on Aladdin's ruin. As he passed through the town, he heard people talking everywhere about a marvelous palace. The magician said to them, Forgive my ignorance. What is this palace you speak of? The reply was, Like, oh my god, have you, like, not heard of, like, Prince Aladdin's palace? Oh, it's all the rape. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, one of the greatest wonders of the world. Like, just for real. Just, like, look up if you want to see it. Bah. Bah. <laughs> the magician thanked him, who spoke... <laughs> thanked him who spoke, and then having seen the palace, he knew that it had been raised by the genie of the lamp, and because, uh, and he became half mad with rage. He was determined to get a hold of the lamp and again plunge Aladdin into the deepest poverty. Unluckily, Aladdin had gone hunting for eight days, which gave the magician plenty of time. He bought a dozen copper lantern or er, lanterns, copper lamps, and put them into a basket. He went to the palace crying... New lamps for old. And he was followed by a jeering crowd, calling him, what were they calling him? Jin, Jin Mad. Jin Mad. This you, motherfucker is Jin Mad. Oh, you're Jin out. Mad, you mother Crazy by the fucking. You lamp hoarding son of a bitch. The princess sitting <laughs> in the hall of four and twenty windows. <laughs> Blazing. <laughs> sent a slave to find out what the noise was about. Oh, it's just, oh. Uh, who came back laughing so that the princess <laughs> scolded her. The slave maiden said, <clears throat> Pardon, madame, but you cannot help laughing to see such an old fool offering to exchange fine new lambs for the old ones. <laughs> Hello. Another slave maiden hearing this said, Oh, yes, there has an old one in the currents, which that he can have. Now this was the magic lamp which Aladdin had left there as he could not take it out hunting with him. The princess, not knowing its value, laughingly obeyed it, uh, the slave to take it out and make the exchange, to see if he was not telling the truth. She went down and said to the magician, Monsieur, give me a new lamp for this, yes? He snatched it and bade the slave to take her choice, and at the jeers of the crowd. Little he cared, but left off carrying his lamps and went out of the city gates to a lonely place, where he remained till nightfall. And when he pulled out the lamp to rub it, the genie appeared, and the magician commanded, uh, command carried him, together with the palace and the princess in it, to a lonely place in Africa. Traveling by genie. <laughs> Just whisked him away. In a palace. In a palace. Yeah. You're set, dude. You're fine. I love kidnapping people. Next morning, <laughs> he's very good at it. <laughs> the sultan looked out the window towards Aladdin's palace and rubbed his eyes, for it was gone. He sent for the vizier and what, and asked what had become of the palace. The vizier looked out, too, and was lost in astonishment. He again put it down to enchantment, and this time the sultan believed him and sent thirty men on horseback to fetch Aladdin in chains. Hup, 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 hup. They met him riding home, bound him, and forced him to go with them on foot. The people who, out, however, who loved him followed, uh, armed, to see that he came to no harm. I love this guy. He pees on me every Thursday. Well, All the golden showers. <coughs> <laughs> he was carried before the sultan, who ordered the executioner to cut off his head. The executioner made Aladdin kneel down, bandaged his eyes, and raised his scimitar to strike. At that instant, the vizier, who saw the crowd, had forced their way into the courtyard and were scaling the walls to rescue Aladdin, called to the executioner to stay his hand. The people indeed looked so threatening that the sultan gave way and ordered Aladdin to be unbound and parted him in the sight of the crowd. Aladdin now begged to know what had he had done. The sultan said... Motherfucker, I woke and found your pavilion completely vanished, and my daughter along with it. My only child. Oh, that I love in this world. What do you have to say for yourself, Aladdin? 
Aladdin was so amazed that he could not say a word. The sultan demanded, Where the fuck is my daughter, motherfucker? The pavilion I don't give a fuck about, but my daughter I must have back. You must find her or lose your head or an ear or maybe a nose. Who knows? (laughs) (laughs) Aladdin begged for 40 days in which to find her, promising that if he had failed, he, he would return and suffer death at the sultan's pleasure. His prayer was granted, and he went forth sadly from the sultan's presence. For three days he wandered about like a madman, asking everyone what had become of the pal- or his palace, but they only laughed and pitied him. He came to the banks of a river and kneeled down to say his prayers before thinking of throwing himself in. In so doing, he rubbed the magic ring he still wore. The genie he had seen in the cave appeared, and he asked his will. Aladdin said, Save my life, genie, and bring my palace back. The djinn said, mm, That's like oh. not in my power. But you know what it is? This pineapple. Oh. Oh. Dude, that's kind of. <laughs> I'm only the slave of the ring. You like must ask the slave of the lamp for such a task as that. That's like a watermelon. Okay, <laughs> I can only handle pineapple. <laughs> First, put the whole ring in your mouth. (laughs) Aladdin said, (laughs) Hmm, but you can take me to the palace and set me down under my dear wife's window. The djinn said, Bruh. Jesus Christ, to hear it to like, obey, yes. (laughs) He had once found himself in Africa under the window of the princess and fell asleep out of the sheer weariness. He was awakened by the singing of birds, and his heart was lighter. He saw plainly that all of his misfortunes were owing to the loss of his lamps, and vainly wondered who had robbed him of it. That morning, the princess rose earlier than she had done since she had been carried into Africa by the magician, whose company she was forced to endure once a day. (laughs) Heaven forbid. She... It's so annoying. (laughs) She, however, treated him so harshly that he dared not live there altogether. As she was dressing, one of her maid, one of her slaves, uh, looked out and saw Aladdin. The princess ran and opened the window, and at the noise she made Aladdin to look up. She called to him to come to her, and the great joy of these lovers seeing each other again. Woo. Woo. Yay. <laughs> Yay. After like he... Marissa. Thank you. Very well. Yay. After he had kissed her, Aladdin said... I beg you, princess, in Allah's name, before we speak of anything else, for your own sake and for mine, tell me, what has become of the old lamp in my apartment I left on the dresser when I went out hunting? Bruh. (laughs) Alas! I am the innocent cause of my sorrows. I forgot her voice. (laughs) That works. (laughs) (laughs) And told him of the exchange of the lamp. Aladdin said, "Now, now I know we that we have the African magician to thank for this. Where is the fucking lamp, bro? Oh, we're reverting. He's reverting a little bit. He's <laughs> mad now. Yeah, they haven't got to fucking while, so <laughs> he's reverting for a while. Mom, I'm probably says, call it duty. <laughs> the princess says, "He carries it about with him. I know." For he pulled it out of his breast to show me. He wishes me to break my faith with you and marry him, saying that you were beheaded by my father's command. He is forever speaking ill of you, but I only repay or reply by my tears. If I persist, I doubt that not even he will use violence. Or what? I doubt not that he will use violence and force oh himself that upon me. Makes more him. sense. <laughs> Aladdin comforted her and left her for a while. He changed clothes with the first person he met in town, and having bought a certain powder, returned to the princess, who let him in by the side door. He said to her, Put on your most beautiful dress, bro, and receive the magician with smiles, leading him to believe that you've forgotten me. Invite him in to dine with you and say you wish to taste the wine of his country, bro. He'll know what that means. He'll know what that means. It's Budwine. (laughs) He'll go get some. 
While he is gone, I will tell you what to do. I thought that was code for a hand. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> she listened carefully to Aladdin, and when he left her, arrayed herself gaily for the first time since she left China. She put on a girdle and a headdress of diamonds, and seeing in a mirror that she looked more beautiful than ever, received the magician, saying to his great amazement, I have made up my mind that Aladdin is dead, and that all my tears will not bring him back to me. So I am resolved to mourn no more, and therefore invite you to sup with me. Wink. But I am tired of the wines of China, and would be pleased to taste those of Africa. Mm. I miss the wines that I have never seen. <laughs> Black dick before. <laughs> the magician flew to his cellar, and the princess put the powder Aladdin had given into her cup. And when she returned, or when he returned, she asked him to drink her, drink her health in wine of Africa, handing him her cup in exchange for his, as a sign she was reconciled to him. But before drinking, the magician made her a speech in praise of her beauty. But the princess cut him short, saying, Let me drink first, and you shall have what you have to say afterwards. I don't care. I don't give a fuck. I I'm too sober. Yeah. <laughs> too sober to She have set her cup to her lips and kept it there, while the magician drained his to the, dr- the dregs and fell back lifeless. Bleh. The princess then opened the door to Aladdin and flung her arms around his neck. But Aladdin put her away, bidding her to leave him. And he had more to do. He had went to the dead magician, took the lamp out of his vest, and bade the genie carry the palace and all in it back to China. This was done, and the princess in her chamber only felt two little shocks. And little though she was, um, and little thought she was at home again. Hmm. The sultan, who was sitting in his apartment mourning for the loss of his daughter, happened to look up and rubbed his eyes, for there stood Aladdin's palace, a splendid palace just as before he hastened thither and aladdin received him in the hall of four and twenty windows blaze one with the princess at his side aladdin told him what had happened and showed him the dead body of the magician that he might be believed a a ten-day feast was proclaimed and it seemed as if aladdin might now live and rest in peace with whatever but it was not to be but it was not to be. Was not to be. You think it would stop there, but no. Mm. Bum, bum, bum. The African magician, the Maharabi of the Moroccan desert, had a younger brother who was, if possible, more wicked and more cunning than him, than his other brother, whatever. He was a necromancer of sorts, an astrologer. 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 Something to do with alcohol, too. Anyway, mainly. Only they one just, of those things. They call him. <laughs> A necromancer, for sure. Yeah. Uh, he traveled to China to avenge his brother's death and went to visit the holy woman called Fatima, thinking that she might be of use to him. She was a holy woman, a devotee in that area and region. You know what I mean? Like like the Mother Mary and shit. That's what mm-hmm. she did. She touched people and she healed them. Yeah, she did. Skip into right it. In the bunghole. She lived in a little cave. Just a little pinky right in that pooper. He entered that cave dwelling of hers and clasped a dagger to her breast, telling her to rise and to do his bidding on pain of death. He changed her clothes with her, colored her, his face like her, and put a, her veil and murdered her by strangulation. He's still got a big-ass beard popping out. <laughs> That's why the veil, you know, the veil covers over the nose and goes down. It's dangling. This beard, I'd like to imagine this beard just popping out the side. <laughs> right, he's got to be real careful. I am Fatima. Believe uh, me. That she may tell no tales. Then he went towards the palace of Aladdin, and all the people thinking he was the holy woman gathered about him, kissing his hands and begging his blessing. When he got to the palace, there was such a noise going on around him that the princess bade her slave to look out the window and ask what was the matter. Uh, the slave said to the holy woman, curing people by her touch and ailments, whereupon the princess, who had long desired to see Fatima, sent for her. On coming to the princess, the magician offered up a prayer for her health and prosperity. When he had done, the princess made him sit by her and begged him to stay with her always. The false Fatima, who wished for nothing better, consented. 
by keeping his veil down for fear of discovery. The princess showed him the halls and asked him what he thought of it. The false Fatima said, It is truly beautiful. In my mind, it wants but one thing. The princess asked, And what's that? And the false Fatima replied, If only a rock's egg were hung from the middle of this dome, it would be the wonder of the world. And after this, the princess could think of nothing more than a rock, rock's egg. Whatever. And when Aladdin returned from hunting, he found her in a very ill humor. He begged to know what was amiss, and she told him that her pleasure in the hall was spoiled for her wants of a rock's egg hanging from the dome. Aladdin replied, Is that all? You have but to ask, and I shall give you anything your heart desires, bro. Do not uh, worry. <laughs> I will get it, and you shall soon be happy, bruh. He left her and rubbed the lamp, and when the genie appeared, commanded him to bring the rock's egg, the genie gave such a loud and terrible streak that the halls shook his anger, and his anger knew no bounds. He cried, Reg, it is not enough that I owe what I urge it, that I have done everything for you, but you must command me to bring my master and hang him up in the midst of this dome. You and your wife and your palace deserve to be burned to ashes. But this request does not come from you, but from the brother of that African magician whom you destroyed. He is now in your palace, disguised as the holy woman whom he murdered. Murdered. It was he who had put the wish into your wife's head. Take care of yourself, bro. For he means to kill you. Mm. Bro. I can't. He was screaming slave, I'm sorry. Uh, I have a really hard time with Mr. Slave's voice. Uh, so the genie <laughs> said, and then he disappeared. Mm. Uh, Aladdin went back to the princess, saying his head ached, and requested that the holy Fatima should be fetched to lay her hands upon it. But when the magician came near Aladdin, he seized his dagger to pierce him in the heart. But Aladdin swung that fucking shit around and stabbed him right in the heart. Your the princess is Jackie like, Chan, bitch. Ah, what have you done? You killed the holy woman. You're going to burn in hell. Aladdin's like, bruh. Nah. Like, not even. It's like a wicked magician who is the brother of the other magician who carried you off to Africa. Like, magician problems. Am I right? And told her of how she had been deceived. <laughs> After this, Aladdin and his wife lived in peace, and they su then he succeeded as a sultan when he died and reigned for many years, leaving behind him a long line of kings. Long may he reign! The end. The end. Yeah, it wasn't very... Uh, it was very much shortened. It was very detailed how he strangled her. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of creepy to detail. I was like, wow. I am just the holy woman, Fatima. Don't I mean, bother with me. This is literally three lines <laughs> in this book that's just describing him strangling her. Wow. <laughs> they really got into that one. <laughs> Someone's not happy at home. Someone's not happy <laughs> Someone's at home. Someone's been thinking about stuff that he shouldn't be thinking about. <laughs> yeah. When you're thinking about that, you need to seek help. Seek help. And that not is. from a genie. Especially if you carry out. Definitely seek. Anyway. Sorry. Yeah, hope you folks enjoyed it. Uh, yeah. It's a good, fun one. If, you, if you've if you ever watched the Disney movie, this is nothing like the Disney mm. movie whatsoever. Nope. I think other than there being a character named Aladdin and a genie are about the only two aspects to carry over. Well, his name wasn't genie, it was Jin. Jin. Yeah. Not even the same. Yeah. A G G genie is just the westernized uh, version. I know. His name is wasn't old genie. School. Aladdin kept calling him Genie. Robin Williams responded to Genie. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that was just hey, his Jin. name. His name was Gene the Jin. Jin. So they called him Genie. Ah. Genie the Jenny. <laughs> and he was a fucking lazy piece of shit who had parents. Yeah. <laughs> I know. He was the death of one of them because he couldn't figure out what he wanted to do with his life. <laughs> I love how the father Jesus. put his death on him, too. I know, right? You know the father died of something. <laughs> like, he just, just got stimulus. back from the doctor and they're like, yeah, you, you've got heart problems. You're going to die. He's like, well, I'm going to go home and I'm going to tell my good for nothing son that it's his fault. Yeah. And I'm going to have him have look me in the eyes girl. while I die with a look of disappointment <laughs> on my face. Because I guess a tailor was like the poorest of the merchants. <laughs> <laughs> Trade wise. Anyway. 
Yeah. yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope Check you us enjoyed out. it. Uh, Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere yeah. you get your podcasts. You're Check listening it to it right now, so you know where to find yeah. us. Hey, girl. <laughs> Reach out for us on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Instagram. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff. Let us, let us know if you have any ideas or want us Hit to us do up. any stories. Just say hi. Hey. Give a shout out. <laughs> Request something. Request something. We'll do or it. Or I'm just going to keep randomly doing shit. Yeah. Next up, some Norse. Yep, going back to Norse. Got a funny one in there. Oh, yeah, we got some funny we Norse some. tales coming up. Uh, Yeah, we will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.